You know, I'm sure like many of you, when I was a young child, I wanted to be something special. You know, I wanted to grow up and have power and, and, and do some great things. And, you know, I'm proud to say today that I am king of the lunch ladies in Montague and Whitehall schools. Thank you. Um, and today, I want to take you guys on our journey this past year um, where we tried to bring some fresh back into lunch. And, oh, here we go. The, the first thing, though, I, I need to tell you a little bit about school meals in general. Um, for most kids every day, school meals is the healthiest meal that they get. And the reason that is, is it has appropriate portion sizes. We offer lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, it's a well-balanced meal. The other reason that is, is as parents and as a community, we have a really low bar for what we'll serve kids. And, and because of that, school meals really offers some good stuff for kids, but we can do better. Um, you know, I want to give you a little school econ 101. We sell a meal for 225 when we get done with all the other expenses. We have about 80 cents left for the center of the plate. That might be what you pay for an organic apple. Um, the other thing I had to determine when I became a school food service director is, you know, what is healthy? Um, there's a lot of buzz around about what's healthy. Ten years ago, it was low fat. More recently, it might have been um, low carb or gluten free or organic. Um, so, so those were all the things. And, and what I determined, you know, that I would have to do for the school and for the kids is that probably the closer to natural, the better. So an apple's probably healthier than applesauce. Applesauce is probably healthier than apple juice. It doesn't mean that there isn't some uh, nutritional benefits to applesauce and apple juice, but probably an apple's a little healthier. And so that's really what we've done in our school district um, these past couple, um, these past 15 years. And we've done a good job. We found a lot of ways to get local food into our school districts. We um, we give kids a lot of variety. We show the food in different ways to get them to try it. Um, we serve country dairy milk, which is a dairy that's up in our school district, which is a really, serves a really high quality product, and we're very proud of that. Um, you know, the thing we haven't really changed that much is the center of the plate item. You know, we tried and haven't had a ton of success. Um, and so this past year, um, a couple things happened that kind of spurred us on to that next level. Um, in, in Shelby schools, they got a new food service director, Mary Weyer, and she made some changes and did some things a different way and had some success. In Pennsylvania school, which is in Reese Puffer, um, uh, Chef Jamie Paquin from Mia and Grace, she made some changes there with a small group of kids and had some success. And so this really kind of inspired us to see if we could do something different. And, and this is a chicken nugget, <laughs> and we serve you know, we had served chicken nuggets probably every day, excuse me, once a week in our school buildings. So we'd serve a chicken nugget or something that looked like a chicken nugget once a week. And so our idea was, what if we didn't serve chicken nuggets in our elementary school buildings? What if we took our raw USDA commodity chicken, used that as a raw ingredient, came up with some recipes, and served that once a week instead of the chicken nuggets? And, and that, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but I, I had to have this conversation with myself because I saw people doing great things, and I want to serve healthy food to kids. I really do. And so I had to tell myself, you know what? I'm all in. I, I'm, I'm going to do this, and, and either we're going to be a success or we're going to be a failure. Um, and so last year in February, to, to secure the commodity chicken that comes at a very reduced price, I, in February, I had to push a button and commit to 24,000 pounds of chicken to come into my district. You know, so, so when I made that statement, I was all in. I talked to my superintendents in both districts and said, you know what, we have this idea, we want to do it, it's going to cost money, we want to do it right. You know, we were going to pay for training for my staff to work. We hired um, Chef Jamie to develop recipes for us, to work with my staff over the summer. And so this is what we came up with. We call it Fresh Thursday. We have these five main items. Today we did serve our um, black bean and chicken taco salad. One of the things that we got from our friends in Shelby that was one of their great ideas, when they serve something new and different, the choices that the kids have on Fresh Thursday are also new, fresh ideas. 
So we serve it cranberry chicken salad, or we serve hummus with veggies and a whole wheat pretzel stick with it. And so that's what the kids have. So it really kind of funnels them that they're going to try something new on this day. And so over the summer, um, we worked on these recipes. And so this is the first day within the first hour. Chef Jamie is there showing my nine cooks um, how to prepare the chicken and do it. This is my cooks getting the raw chicken ready. And this is the cooked chicken. And this is picking chicken. And so we really, picking chicken has achieved legendary status in our district. We have, we have to go through and pick 600 pounds of chicken every week to have these ingredients. This is really time consuming and there's just, and we have to get a lot of people together to do it. So it isn't just one person doing it. We get people from a bunch of different buildings and coordinate schedules and it's chicken picking day. And, and so it really, um, that was one of our challenges. And, and, and so my staff learned the recipes. We got to try them probably twice over the summer. Um, this is our black bean chicken taco salad that we served. And, and so we made it through the summer and we did the training and so it's fall. And we're gonna serve it to kids. This is the instructions I have to give my staff if we were serving chicken nuggets. This is it. When we decide to do Fresh Thursday, this is some of the instructions I had to give my staff. And so it was, it was immense and, and we expected some of it, some of it was a surprise. In the summer, we all worked to do one recipe. We served it in one location to kids in one kitchen. In the fall, these recipes were made in our central kitchens, which are normally our high schools. They were made 80%, sent to the um, finishing kitchens in the elementary schools where they would finish them. They would have to put the finishing touches, how we serve all of them, three new items, so it's all different for everybody. So there was a lot of challenges to that, and we worked through that. And that was, and, and, but it wasn't easy. And so, so we're serving it to the kids. And I, I, I had a little dream. I had a dream that, <laughs> that, that I would be, you know, we had worked hard on these recipes. We'd hired a professional chef to develop recipes that these kids would love. We were using great ingredients. We were putting extra time and money into it. And I had this little part of me that said, Maybe I would be a superhero to these kids. Maybe I would walk in and get high fives, and they would cheer, you know? And, and so this is what we got. So not, see, <laughs> luckily, luckily, only a little part of me thought I'd be a superhero. I, I, knew, I, I knew that we would have challenges. You know, we, we served something called broccoli pesto, and it was green, you know? It's different to them. And, and so we really, we really had to work with the kids. And we really had to you know, talk to them and encourage them to, do, to try the different foods and that kind of stuff. And, and, and so this is where we're at. We've served it about eight times. Um, overall, we're down 7% on these days. You know, um, we do have one building that's up over 2%. That building probably has the most enthusiastic teaching staff about the food, the most enthusiastic food service staff, and cafeteria staff. I think that kind of makes the difference with the kids, that they're really encouraging it. You know, but the, the hard part, and what my challenge is right now with the program, once we have it um, going, is that um, I think it's kind of like a bell curve, that we have a group of kids, and they just, they don't like it, and they're not gonna. And we have a group of kids like these kids right here that they do like it. You know, both these kids clean their plate and they love the items that we're serving. And then we have a group in the, the middle. The thing I have to still work with my staff is, they have 15 to 20 kids, when they get the food, they go, no, not this again, I hate this. You know, we had to set up a rule, <laughs> and it, it kind of cracks me up, but we had to set up a rule because we wanted the kids to try it. And well, what they said they own. And it's like, so the line was, if they cry, we will go back and get them something else. But if they're not crying, they're trying what we've got. So, so that's a rule. I'm just like, really? That's a rule? Um, but that's what we have to do. And, and so from my staff's perspective, they get this feedback from kids. Um, and it's because it's, it's that 15 to 20 kids that say, I hate this. And they're like, why are we doing this to these poor kids? And, and so, you know, what I have to tell them is just go back and say, you know what? You know, we're in that bell curve. And, and we're doing it because we know natural's better. 
We know that we're serving a healthier product for our kids, and we want to keep doing that. Um, and, and so, you know, I'm really grateful that I have 24,000 pounds of chicken committed. I can't step back and say, let's not. Um, <laughs> so we're in. You know, we're all in. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to go. I do know that by the time we get done, um, it's going to be um, the kids are going to have healthier food. What we're serving might fail. We might change it to something else. But it's going to be healthier food. And so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, I, I've got a quote that, uh, that I heard and I really like. And it's George Bernard Shaw. And it is, um, this is the true joy of life, that of being used up for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. And, uh, and so my, my mighty purpose is to, to serve food to kids. And it's OK if that isn't your mighty, if you don't think that's a good mighty purpose, because it's chosen by myself. And, and, and school food is not really seen as a position of a lot of power. And I don't think that's true. Every day in Muskegon County, we serve 16,000 lunches. We serve 7,000 breakfasts. In Michigan, we serve 780,000 lunches a day. If you take what nationwide, what we get from the USDA and what we take in from parents, our revenue equals McDonald's revenue. Now, McDonald's goes to their farmers and they say, you're going to farm this way. They go to their processors and say, you're going to do it exactly this way. And they can do that. We've got that power, but we don't take it. We should be going to our, our people and saying, you know what? We want the healthiest food possible, and it has to look this way. You know, and so we do have power with that. The other thing I think school, person, school food service people have power with kids. We get to see the kids every day while they're in our school system. From the time they're in kindergarten until they're in fifth grade, we get to see them once or twice a day. And the thing that's really cool about it, we don't have to teach kids anything. We don't have to make them do anything. They don't have to learn Algebra two with us. They don't have to make sure they need to learn their math facts. We're the only adult in the school system that can just be nice. And that's really powerful. We get to be nice. Man. And then you talk about kids and their health. You know, kid, kids are responsible for their own health, and then probably their parents. But after that, who has more power? Do doctors who get to see them maybe once every six months? We get to feed them two meals a day. And we really need to take that power and own it. You know, I'm, I'm really excited about being in Muskegon County. There's a lot of great health things that are going on. And, um, and I'm excited to be a part of that. And, and, and I think there's, there's different things going on in the schools and within the community that we're going to make a difference. And I just, you know, just want to say finally that you know, it's really nice to be the king. Thank you. Thank you.